JC Motors here, and today we're going to teach you how to properly fit a helmet. At JC Motors, you can ride with confidence and shop with confidence, knowing that we offer no hassle returns, life returns, and even a damage replacement offer. Go to jcmotors.com to get all the details, and you'll find out why over 280,000 motorcycle enthusiasts like yourself have purchased their parts and gear from us. Today, we've got Randy Northrup representing Schubert North America to teach you how to properly fit a helmet. Thanks, Clint. Um, I've been in the helmet industry a long time, and one of the uh, the things that uh, that we've noticed in the last 20 years is that when we go to several events around the country, that for the most part, 50% uh, uh, of the people are in an improperly fit helmet. So I have Joe Hargett here with me so that we can help uh, demonstrate a couple of things. Um, but first of all, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the way a helmet works. What you have is a, a shell. There's three components that make up what a helmet really does. You have the outer shell, which is designed, if you have an impact, to spread that impact over a greater area. Um, when, when you spread that impact over a greater area, on the inside you have the EPS. And the EPS is called the Epple Polystyrene. And this is the part that's designed to crush slowly so that your brain uh, doesn't slam against the inside of your skull. So the reason we're talking about this is because an improperly fit helmet doesn't function as well as a properly fitted helmet. The third component that we have here is the comfort liner. And it's just that. It's clearly for just comforting uh, your head uh, to wear it around for your motorcycling. Uh, so what we talked about in, in terms of the internal fit, the reason we want to get it perfectly fit, because if the helmet impacts and the first thing to move before the EPS is designed to crush on the inside, that means your head is moving, and when your head finally does make contact with the EPS, your brain then is in is starts to move towards your skull and those milliseconds are so important to have a properly fitted helmet so that the EPS does its job and your head doesn't move to the inside of the uh, the shell. So with that um, we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the fitting of a helmet and what we have uh, to get that perfect we want to start with a simple measurement. If I can back up one step Randy, so basically when you say 50 percent of people have a have a helmet that's not properly fitted. You're saying 50% of people their helmet is too big. Generally because people like to be comfortable. So they initially buy a helmet that uh, that's, feels very, very comfortable only because it's very, very loose. So we're going to talk about how to properly check that, but also after uh, you spend a, a fair amount of time in the helmet, you have sweat, you have hair care products, and that tends to break down the EPS. Again, we talk about this, this component here, which tends to get broken down by just general usage. So after a couple of years, uh, your helmet starts to fit a little looser, and therefore it's really not able to do its job. So we'll talk a, a little bit more about that. Did that answer your question, Joe? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So here's how we're going to properly fit a helmet. On the back of uh, Joe's head, he's got uh, a, a knob. He's not unusual, everybody's got one, I've got one here as well. Um, and that little uh, notch on the back of your head is basically where your neck muscles attach to the back of your skull. Um, so what we want to do is measure from there and then around the other uh, crown of the head. So we'll focus on the crown fitting in the first part here. And 50, let me go just a little bit down here, 58 and a half. So you can refer to your size chart. This uh, has also inches and millimeters, so you can refer to the size chart. What you'll want to do is look at every manufacturer. If you are choosing a Schubert helmet or a Fly helmet, go to the Fly site, go to the Schubert site on JC Motors part, and they'll actually give you the fitting for that particular brand. Just because you're a large in one brand doesn't mean you're a large in the other brands. You really need to go specifically to the brand. Um, so what we want, what we've done is we prepared this uh, this fly helmet here without the cheek pads, essentially because the most important part is getting the crown fit properly first, and this just allows us to focus a little bit more uh, time and energy on that. And basically, is there any difference fitting a motocross full face helmet than a street helmet? 
Uh, not really. You know, you have a little bit different, uh, you know, structure for keeping it on your head. Um, but the cheek pads, uh, they're basically making up the three components, the shell, the EPS, and the comfort liner on the inside. Uh, so when you've uh, uh, focusing here, whether, whether it's a flip-up helmet, a dirt helmet, or a full-face helmet, the same components exist. Okay. So with the cheek pads removed, like I said, we're able to focus on the crown because this is the most essential uh, part of your, your head. Of course, you know, a full face helmet of any kind is going to give you some, uh, some protection and we can all, always get the, uh, the cheek pads to fit properly. Um, so, uh, Joe, if you want to do one of the first tests, this one's just a forward movement test and push that forward so that we can do a test in here just to make sure that when he compresses the foam in the back that we don't have a large gap. You know, if I was able to stick a, a couple of fingers up in there, what we would have is, is something that's just too big because the helmet will eventually break in, so we really want a snug fit in the beginning, in which we have in this particular case. That's a good fit. So next we'll talk about the, the, uh, the cheek pads. Um, this is a, a different style of helmet, but it's got the cheek pads installed. And uh, so Joe put that on. <clears throat> and we'll do the same tests, but in a little bit different mode. Let's go ahead and pull this down. So go ahead and uh, pull this forward. So what we have is a, another good fitting helmet. And then also just grab your chin bar and just do a little bit of movement side to side. You don't have excessive movement, you have plenty of comfort, but you can see that there's still a, a nice uh, a fit on either side. If by chance you have a very narrow jawline or you have a, a little rounder, fuller uh, cheeks, you can always get uh, you know, uh, custom fitted cheek pads and you know, through JC Motors, I'm sure they have them, so you can just uh, call them up or go online and, and take a look. There is another uh, component that we haven't done here yet, but I'm going to show. Joe, you want to just kind of reach around the back and just pull it forward like you're going to try to roll it off your head? Right? This is just an additional test to make sure that the helmet doesn't roll all the way off your head. And that actually can be adjusted by adjusting this, uh, this chin strap, which is also a very, very important part. How's that feel, Joe? Good. Yeah. Now, and how far were th was your finger really going up in there? Really, you're just making sure that it goes up. Uh, um, if you're able to take, you know, say one of your larger digits and push it all the way up, then the the helmet probably you should you should uh, try that uh, the next size down because really this is the most important part. And like I said, you know, the uh, the helmets will tend to break into the shape of your 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 crown, and that, so that's a very important part. Um, if you get the helmet. Wear it around your house for a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes just while you're watching TV and make sure that you get a properly fitted helmet because helmets do break in according to your head. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Thanks, guys. Just remember, if you purchase a helmet from JC Motors and it's not the right size and you want another size or you might even want another helmet, JC Motors has a great return plan. We don't have restock fees. You can see all the details of our guarantees at jcmotors.com. And we welcome all your questions. Call us, 800-706-9476, or go to jcmotors.com. Get live support, and you'll find out why JC Motors is where riders get deals.